Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Billy Billy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Billy Billy is a YouTube of China. It is a video sharing website themed around animation, comics, and games where users can submit, view, and add commentary right on the video. It uses Adobe Flash or HTML5 player to play user submitted videos hosted by either itself or third party sources. It features a scrolling comment section, which is really cool. Comments are scrolled across the screen as they're being written. You can easily turn off this feature as well if it bothers you. Since the mid 2010s, it began to expand to a larger audience from its original niche market that focused on anime and games. By doing this, it has become one of the major Chinese video on demand streaming platforms that programs critically acclaimed and popular documentaries, variety shows, and other original programming. It also provides a live streaming service where the audience can interact with the streamer. It has 237 million monthly active users compared to YouTube's 2 billion. 86% of Billy Billy's users are below 35 years old. It has 17.4 million premium paying members. When you invest in any stock, there is risk the numbers are inflated, altered, or grossly inaccurate. It seems the risk is higher with Chinese stocks. A recent example was with Luck and Coffee. A lot of investors really took a bath on that stock. Billy Billy is headquartered in Shanghai, China and was founded in 2009. It started trading in 2018 and can be found on the NASDAQ, Mexican Bolsa, London Stock Exchange, Bursa Stuttgart, and Shanghai Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 32 billion market cap. They're trading at $84 a share and they have 383 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows a ton from 660 million all the way up to two and a half billion. This is the company's income statement. All the numbers in their financials are in Chinese ones. I converted these numbers to US dollars in my Excel spreadsheet. An easy way to convert these numbers to US dollars is just to divide by seven. The top line is the revenue, the sales. It earns revenue from four main sources, mobile games, value added services, advertising, and e-commerce. Mobile games is when it earns revenue from game developers for promoting and hosting games on its platform. And that's growing every year, but it's shrinking as a percent of their total revenue. It went from 70% of their revenue in 2018 down to 40%. Value added services are subscription fees from its members and also donations and gifts to live streamers. And that's going up and it's going up more as a percent of revenue. It was 14% of their revenue in 2018, up to 32% in 2020. Advertising are the ads or banners you see on the website. E-commerce is a sale of products on their website. And that went from three and a half percent in 2018 to 12 and a half percent in 2020. So in each segment, they're growing their revenue a lot from year to year. Here's a breakdown of their revenue by quarter. So it goes up every single quarter, peaking in the current quarter at four and a half billion. Next to revenue is monthly active users, which pretty much goes up every quarter. It was flat one quarter, but besides that, it goes up every single quarter to 237 million monthly active users. That's a lot of eyes looking at the website. The more eyes, the more money the company can charge for ad space. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating a revenue. Revenue sharing cost is their big expense. That's the fees paid to game developers, distribution channels like app stores and to live streamers. And then content costs. These are the costs of licensed content from copyright owners or content distributors. Server and bandwidth costs are the expenses to maintain the website. And e-commerce is the cost of the products they buy to sell on their website. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit and that grows a lot from year to year. Below that is operating expenses and their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit. So they have negative operating income every year. They spent a ton of money in marketing and advertising. In 2020, they spent 3 billion. You can see they had negative 3.1 billion of operating income. If they stopped advertising so much, they could get to break even or even profitability. 
but the company is sacrificing profits now to grow the business for the future. If a company has negative operating income because they're advertising so much, that's not a bad thing. If a company has negative operating income because their payroll is too high or the cost of making the products is too high, that's a problem because they may never become profitable. So as the company grows, they could scale down on their advertising expenses. And once they hit profitability, then their margins grow a lot faster. Because once you pass through your break even point, your fixed costs, profitability grows at a pretty rapid pace. They do have a bit of debt on that balance sheet. So they paid 140 million of interest on their debt. And they do have negative net income each year since they have negative operating income. This is the company's statement of cash flow is the top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. So that's a really good sign. They have positive operating cash flow each year. So you could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. They pass through a lot of stock-based compensation expenses. So they pay their employees with stock. That's a non-cash item. So it brings down your net income, but it doesn't affect cash flow. They also spend a lot of money licensing content. Those costs are amortized on their income statement. So it brings down their net income, but amortization is a non-cash item. And you could see here on CapEx how much money they spend. They spend a ton in CapEx. YouTube not only has user-created content, it also has Hollywood movies on it. So they have to pay the creators of that content a licensing fee in order to sell it or rent it on their platform, similar to Netflix. But YouTube and Billy Billy have much less costs than Netflix because the business model of Netflix is to rent content. YouTube and Billy Billy get a lot of money from advertisements and donations to streamers. So they do have negative free cash flow each year, but that is a positive sign they have operating cash flow. At some point, they're going to have a lot of content on their channel and they'll be bringing a lot more revenue. So they'll start to become much more profitable. So right now they're not profitable. They're losing cash each year, but that's fine because it looks like they're moving in the right direction. They also have been issuing stock to fund their operations. They issued 5 billion in 2018, 1.6 billion, 2.8 billion. So when a company issues stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They've been issuing a lot of debt as well, 3.5 billion, 5.8 billion. Let's look at the capital structure, $4 billion of equity, 1.4 billion of debt. They're 75% equity, 25% debt. Their net debt is negative 3 billion, so they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 3 billion of cash left over. Their weighted average cost of capital is 7.7%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 28 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $23 billion. We divide that by 383 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $59. They're trading at $84. So they're trading at a 41% premium. It's a sell according to the model. According to Simply Wall Street, the analyst forecast is for their revenue to grow 27%. I upped that to 40% because I think they'll grow a lot more than 27%. I grew their 2021, 22, 23, and 24 revenue by 40%. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. And I think they'll still have negative free cash flow in 2021 and a small positive in 2022. And I converted 15% of their revenue into free cash flow in 2023 and 2024. The average company converts 10% of their revenue into free cash flow. But since they don't have as much overhead as a manufacturing company, I think their margins will be higher. Yet I'm still coming out with the stock price a lot lower than they're trading at. Simply Wall Street values the company at $33 a share. They're also saying it's overvalued. Six analysts priced this stock and the average price target was 114. There's a big difference between valuing a stock and pricing a stock. Pricing a stock is what you think investors are willing to pay. Valuing a stock is what you think the assets are worth. And as you know, investors don't pay as much for a company as it's worth. Some people pay a lot more or a lot less. There are some companies that have never had any revenue and their stock price is pretty high, like some pharmaceutical companies that are developing drugs that they haven't sold yet. This is where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd, so it's done really well since it came out. It did peak at about $160 a share, but then the Chinese government has interfered a lot with Chinese stocks, and pretty much every Chinese stock has took a huge hit. The stock was down more than 50%. It has come up a little the past couple of weeks. This is a candlestick chart the last 12 months. So you can see the stock got really high, about 160 a share. 
But then, as I said earlier, pretty much all Chinese stocks did really poorly recently. When you see a red candlestick on that particular day, the closing price is below the opening price. When you see a green candlestick on that particular day, the closing price is above the opening price. And generally, the closing price for one day is the same or pretty close to the opening price the following day. As you can see, the candlesticks are pretty much connected, although there are some gaps. Gaps can occur when the company reports earnings or major news announcements. Gaps occur when there's a sudden influx of buy or sell orders in pre or post market. Nine out of 10 gaps get filled sometime in the future. So it is possible this gap would never get filled. That's only about 10% of the time. So if you were a big fan of these types of charts, it does look like the top resistance point is 160 a share and the bottom is 60 a share. So the stock is above its resistance point and it looks like there's a good chance it will come between 100 and 150 over the next few months. So it looks like a great opportunity to buy. But nobody can predict the future. There could be a huge market crash and this stock goes down to $40 a share. Or the company may announce its user base doubled and it goes up to $200 a share. So anything can happen. Their beta is a little above one, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market. It's up 100% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 35%. The 52-week low was 40, the high was 158, and the stock is trading between its 50-day and 200-day moving average. Six million shares are traded each day on this stock. It has a pretty low float percentage. Half the shares outstanding are on float, 51% are held by institutions, and 4.3% of the shares are shorted. Here's a list of the total shares shorted the past 12 months. It peaked at 27 million shares shorted in January, but the short percentage came down to 15 million. As a stock price comes down, the short percentage generally comes down. But it is coming back up to 16.6 .6 million shares shorted. You could have made a lot of money if you shorted Chinese stocks the past six months, because pretty much every Chinese stock went down a ton. Even though the stock dropped about 50% in the past four or five months, it's still up 500% the past three years and up 95% the past year. It is down the past 90 days, it's down 25%. Analysts are projecting their earnings to grow 19%, less than their industry of 33%, because right now they're growing their revenue, not their earnings. As you can see here, they're projecting their revenue to grow 27%, a lot more than its industry and the market. If you were smart enough to put $10,000 into this company when it started trading, you would have been at over $120,000 at one point. But even if you're still holding right now, you're at $76,000. That's a really high 80% annualized return. The top shareholders are Rui Chen, the CEO of the company, owns 13%. The Chinese video game giant Tencent, they own 11.4%. Capital Research, 8.7%. The founder of the company, Yi Shu, and then the Amazon of China, Alibaba, owns 6.15%. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. They have a pretty high price to sales ratio. So this may indicate they are overvalued. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. Also, you can calculate it by taking the market cap divided by the annual revenue. They also have a pretty high price to book at eight. They have a high current ratio and quick ratio of 3.5. They have 28 billion Chinese wands on their balance sheet. That's about four billion US dollars, so they do have a lot of cash. They do seem to be well capitalized. They're not losing much free cash flow, only $238 million in the trailing 12 months. And they have $3.8 billion of working capital. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of five other companies in the same industry as Billy Billy. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they are better on price to sales, price to book, and current ratio. This industry tends to have pretty weak ratios. They have a negative ROE. They're a little higher in debt than the average company. They're a pretty big company, 32 billion market cap, but they are small on average because C limit is so big. And of course they don't pay a dividend yet. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 41% premium, but just because I say a stock is overvalued or undervalued, it really doesn't mean anything. No one's listening to me. People are listening to Wall Street Bets, the Reddit community, news reports, earnings reports. No one can predict a stock market in the short term. In the long term, maybe, but even that can be unpredictable. Who would have thought a multi-billion dollar company like Enron, Bear Stearns, and Lehman would have gone bankrupt? But it could happen. The only thing you could do is try to learn about these companies and try to figure out where you want to put your money. But I think this company has a really great future. The more people you can get using your app or your website, the more valuable your company is because you could earn that much more money from selling ad space.
Plus, not to mention all the other things you can sell to the visitors of your site. And their revenue is growing unbelievably. When you grow your revenue four times from 660 million to 2.5 billion, that's a really difficult thing to do. And a lot of their growth is organic. And they don't even need users outside of China. They can have a billion users in their own country. So I think this stock has a really great future, although I do think it's overvalued right now, but I'm not sure if it's gonna come down in price. I ranked their free cash flows one out of 10, their revenue nine out of 10, and their ratio is three out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.